uh, this is a talk which was initially developed as a lightning slot, but we found the time to fill. So uh, it's really, a, as I build it, a practical data science project. Um, I have a past history in, in consulting and data analysis and customer insight, and more recently uh, going more or less alone as an independent consultant. And uh, I've got a couple other guys subcontracting with me, and uh, that's the applied AI thing. And we're tackling a bunch of different projects in different companies, and they are sometimes large, sometimes small. This was quite a small one. This was where uh, we were talking to a, an energy supplier, and they had collected over the course of about 10 or so years, 100,000 or so accounts. Uh, these are energy supply accounts, so it's either a gas installation or an electricity installation uh, in uh, a premises, uh, a shop or a, a business, a company, something. And that was fine. Uh, but they'd put it in you know, piecemeal and uh, bit by bit and uh, not really paid any attention to any kind of grouping. So it ca became the uh, situation that they had out of these 100,000 uh, uh, accounts, uh, a bunch of companies that actually owned each account, so franchises and so on. And they want to start targeting mails and targeting marketing and so on to a company at the company level. So if you've got 10 installations, they just want to sum that, aggregate it, and give, give you one marketing message once, uh, which <laughs> is a little bit time consuming to then look through manually and decide that these companies or the accounts all belong to one company. So I thought this is a good opportunity to do some natural language processing. And using just that data, try to pre-aggregate and uh, make suggestions of accounts which appeared sim sufficiently similar. So lots of uh, fairly uh, rudimentary um, uh, uh, things that we went through. Um, so I just thought I'd, I'd draft up a uh, a quick fast food based uh, um, example of some of the data and some of the things that we were looking at. So, for instance, uh, Bob's Pizza is in here a couple of times. Oh, I should add, this is what we're trying to find, this, this orange bit. This, isn't, this wasn't present in the data, only the grey stuff. So, Bob's Pizza might be in there twice. And you can order it alphabetically by account name, and all right, it more or less turns up. The, the information that we had was things like account name, contact name, uh, the premises, and a billing address. And in this case, right, Bob's Pizza, a couple of different sites. This is in Ireland, by the way. The <laughs> uh, same billing address. So you could probably order it by account name and guess it and figure it out. Uh, but what about Mike's Kebabs, which is actually owned by Mad Mike? But it's also in Dublin, and the billing address is the same. Um, what about Mark's kebabs, <laughs> which comes very next down? And it's very close in Dublin, but the billing address is different, and it's a you know, different guy. Um, what about Fred's falafel, <laughs> where we've got um, two different accounts in slightly different places, possibly, Maybe this is a duplication, maybe it's not. It's very hard to tell. So what we were trying to do, what they wanted to be able to do is put human eyes on this, um, but <laughs> with 100,000 or so accounts, this is a big uh, load of data to, to chew through. And so what we wanted to do was give them a little head start. So this was a very short project, only about a week or so, to do some initial processing so we can start doing some clustering and then uh, feed the results of that clustering to human eyes, a bunch of uh, interns, to actually do that human interpretation before putting it onto um, the actual client themselves. So we used some, some fun stuff in, in uh, Scikit-Learn and NLTK, which um, guys have already mentioned a little bit today and I won't pretend to know more than I do. Um, I think it was Neri and, and Bart uh, mentioned some tools which are probably the same ones, or, or at least very similar, it's in the same toolkits. So we did some, um, we did some parsing, some cleaning, fairly proprietary. 
just trying to spell incorrect sometimes, trying to lemmatize sometimes, um, trying to strip out uh, uh, needless punctuation, you know, the, the kind of usual stuff, lower casing, trying to preserve those crucial uh, pun uh, punctuation like in addresses. Uh, maybe someone's at 59 slash 61 Upper Street and you need to preserve that slash because it's actually part of the address. Um, and also with the starting parts of addresses, actually if I go back to this one, we were trying to preserve, uh, you know, 3 Upper Street is a single address. It needs to be preserved. So we were doing some, some things to, uh, to keep those tokens together <coughs> through the next bit. Uh, so once we, we, we tokenized, um, made use of TF-IDF vectorizer, it's fantastic. It's really, really simple. Um, and it ended, ended up with a data, a sparse matrix that was about uh, 100,000 uh, rows, about 20,000 features, just because. Uh, and, and this is all running on um, a laptop, a MacBook Air, actually. This isn't mine, but this one. Uh, <laughs> that's all fine, well and good, but we don't have any predictions yet wanted to run clustering, so transformed those into uh, vectors um, and ended up, through singular value decomposition, ended up with um, about a hundred dimensional matrix. Um, we could then start doing some clustering upon. So we still have this problem in that uh, we, we, we've, got, we've got data points, we've got accounts which are similar somehow and we can group them somehow, but they're not necessarily true companies. So the most important part of this is actually the step two, this human validation, verification. For a start, what I wanted to do um, was subdivide this big set into manageable chunks that people could then look at. So the first step um, to try to do some k-means, I actually used mini-batch because it was ridiculously fast and I was able to do some grid searching and parameter tuning uh, with that because it was running in you know, seconds flat on, on my laptop. And that got us some, some splits, which I've uh, marked with the, the shapes of these things. Of course, now, with the k-means, it's a reasonably arbitrary count of clusters that you're going to make. and. Uh, measuring the, the Bayesian information criterion, it dropped down to around about 20-odd, 30-odd, where uh, we were getting smallish sizes of, of, of clusters. The, there were about four to 5,000 members, roughly, uh, in, each, in each cluster. Um, and that felt like a reasonable amount to have in what would be a CSV file, an Excel file, actually, for, for human grouping. Um, so once we got down to about that, that size, we got about 25 k-means clusters. Um, I thought within that, we should really try to make life even easier. So now we've got, we've got these vectors in here. So I thought I'd try some affinity propagation, which again on smaller cluster sizes worked reasonably well to gather groups of around about 20 or so similar accounts that were Similar again. Now we're not we're not to the stage of having um, you know Mike's what would I call him Mad Mike or somebody. Uh, not <laughs> we haven't identified the actual companies at this stage because it really required quite a lot of human interpretation and knowledge of towns and areas to interpret these addresses. Um, but it at least lets you order the data set again and have another look at it and really try to use everything that we can on an automated fashion to make the life of, of uh, these guys tagging everything much easier. Uh, and as it was, when we got down to the end, um, after a couple of iterations of, of this grouping, tagging, grouping, tagging, we were actually able to shortcut the process a little bit and start using um, some, some supervised techniques, so not purely unsupervised, but more supervised techniques to actually propagate the <coughs> company uh, identifiers through the set and change sometimes some of the some of the settings. So, for instance, uh, this this guy you know may have been tagged as I think this is a blue guy after human ver verification. Actually, that's not true. That changes this little local area and any propagation in there you know, changes the ones that I haven't shown. 
or it could be that you know, the, the yellow triangle here was actually part of the company, but misidentified. Uh, and again, you know, this is a very pragmatic, uh, pragmatic process of trying to make a best guess and then getting someone to, to, to clarify it. But it actually worked. Uh, this was the nice thing. <laughs> it, it was only a, a brief project, as I mentioned. Um, and we managed to get <laughs> accuracy measures are, are you know, prone to uh, you know, lies. But uh <laughs> 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 what, what I mean by this is when we finally went to the, uh, uh, the company that we were doing this for, uh, they themselves, as industry experts, spent a day or two going through the lists uh, to, to verify what we'd done. And the corrections they made uh, were such that we had gotten 93% you know, of them actually right. We were happy with them. Um, we got, I should mention actually, yeah, so 40-odd um, percent of the accounts turned out to belong to a company. Uh, so there's a lot of just sparse individual accounts in that. Uh, but, but of those that we did find, um, roughly 3, 3.5, 4 accounts per company. Um, which is interesting as well, going back to thinking about the clustering techniques that we could have used, because something like spectral clustering, I am not an expert at all, but there were so many different <laughs> uh, uh, company accounts that we were trying to get. Uh, it was in the ordinary of thousands that we were trying to get out of there. I'm not sure that kind of clustering would even work so well. So it's very, very bitty. Um, and just you know, a nice thing, uh, which was <laughs> the toolkits are great <laughs> and uh, really, really straightforward to piece together and to try this, this pipeline. Um, so I really enjoyed you know, using these, these toolkits again and learned a bit more through it. Uh, and uh, my, my final point from it is, is simply that uh, if you can get human eyes on it, on the data to validate and verify what you found, then it becomes even stronger. Um, so that's, that's really that. Thanks.